Ladies and gentlemen, Whizzle on the Slinger going against Dan, Nightlight, Royalty, and Bobo Zavre. What a stacked roster on both sides there. Whizzle with experience all across the board, thousands of games in tournaments. Nightlight from Team Agony together with Royalty. Remember, a true legendary team in the past of Competitive Dead by Daylight. Dan and Bubba Zavre, really, really experienced as well. And here we are now on the suffocation pit. Whizzle is trying to find the first survivor and we do see the new meta in competitive Dead by Daylight coming out here as well. That is going to be the cigar add-on so you can break the chain and you won't stay uh, take that long of a stun against you as a punishment. Trying to s find the survivors in the corrupted Ooh. area. A beautiful 3-gen here and a nice Misses. quick scope on to Nightlight but unfortunately the first shot in the game is a miss onto former captain of Team Agony. Nightlight here on this very unsafe tile. It's unfortunately vaulting into the killer, but will stay down here on the bottom side in the corrupted area, trying to waste as much time as possible, but there can be the shot through the window. Is it going to be the first down into the game? And yes, that is going to come through here. So very early quick and down, basement? well played. And the basement as well, yeah, this doesn't look too good here. Yeah, someone was going in for the save. I believe that was royalty, but they weren't able to make it just yet. Nightlight is going to take this first hook on the back hook of the basement as well. So toxic coming out from the kill here, but the reload will come through as well. That sloppy butcher is going to do a lot of damage once Nightlight gets off this hook. Whizzle is going to have an opportunity to either tunnel them out or camp them there as they are in such a good location as well. You have to look around this bottom side of the map. The shack side has a lot of generators remaining. Whizzle, knowing that he saw royalty, is going to be checking these lockers, but he checked the wrong one and someone jumps out the other one that's going to be the head-on play that we always see at the so start nice. of these games royalty who is going to go for the ball and is going to make it whistle not able to land a, a next shot either uh he's going to want to try and find the shot onto royalty soon however as the survivors are definitely already focusing on those generators and probably also trying to sneak past Whistle and go for that save onto Nightlight. We see Royalty in the corner of our eye. Whistle sees him too heading over there. Or actually, maybe that was Bubble as we do see Royalty having a chase over here. I don't think Royalty has mastered the art of duplication just yet. So yes, we'll take the first one onto Royalty as Bubbo heads over to go get the save. But is it going to be too late? Nightlight's about to hit second stage. Is Bubbo there? Ooh, just barely in the nick of time. And the first gen pops wow. as well. Last second save here and the exchange of the first generator for that. It's going to be the Shack Pallet dropped here. Now leaving the trial and the blind coming out. They are aware that they need to get away and out here in safety. You don't want Nightlight to be down straight again and it seems to be good plan here. Dan is taking the job of the bodyguard and will guide yeah. Nightlight towards safety. There's going to be the injury now, but the gun is still loaded. Has a shot when Nightlight is trying to reach the top side, and we unfortunately do not really see any pallet around here because there was a hill spawning the map designer of Behavior Interactive not with Nightlight here in this first trial. Ooh, and gym. Is it going to be a shot over the pallet? No, it's going to be another loop for the second generator. Nightlight taking the wall. Very very nice mind game here. He is forced to run back. It's now going to be the chain and that's the down here straight again. But Nightlight wasted a lot of time here playing this filler pallet well. Was forcing Whistle to break it. So there is potentially the chance for a third generator coming out here. And we only have one injury on to Dan. So the sloppy butcher that Whistle brought in is not giving him that much effect just yet. And I don't know if this is a little bit greedy maybe with this distance Ooh, towards the hook. But he does manage to get it through. That was definitely not the most uh, confident one here. So he is a little bit lucky that there's went through and Nightlight now 60 seconds away from the first kill. Yeah, but you have to keep in mind here, Dyer, the survivors have time to try and work on Wizzle's 3-gen here on the Shack side. He's not able to get another quick down or confirm the kill as the save comes through, just like I was saying, uh, that people are going to start popping these gins if Wizzle isn't able to try and get rid of them as fast as possible. Nightlight's still injured here, but Bubble's going to take a quick hit. Quick hit. He's not going to be able to body block for much longer, and Nightlight should be going down here soon if Wizzle's able to land the next shot. The question is, is he going to be able to make another resource? He has the hill. He 
has this pallet. He does make the pallet just in the nick of time. Wizzle not able to go for any quick shots around it just yet because of the position of Nyla as well. So this is going to waste a little bit more time and you have to keep in mind, now he's on the opposite side of the map from the other survivors. They're all going to be working on those generators. The three gen is close to popping for sure. Even if Nightlight goes down here and takes the death, there's already the gen gone in the three gen. Yeah, and now the three generators being the punishment for the <gasps> tunnel. Oh, 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 no, the flashlight no, being wrong! So Not coming out here, but a nice attempt from Team Eternal showing us that they are not giving anything for free here. They are on edge and they know exactly that counterplay is needed to whistle. Nightlight now leaving the trial, but for sure he will assist with tactical advices here. We'll make sure that Dan Royalty and Bubba Zavre are having a confident game. Game here seven to six the current score here if you just joined in two points per generator three two two for the hook Ooh. stages in the mid game and that's going to be another miss on to royalty who isn't even trying to dodge as the killer would expect it so very nice mix up between dodging and holding w here on the side of royalty and he does find a perfect juke before the chain can be applied on to him here so two misses in a row royalty on a great run here around this set and is it going to be a shot now, yes, it's coming through. That will be the injury on to Roy. There is going to be a little bit of time due to the reload, but not too long due to the key being brought into the trial whistle. However, taking a look onto the generator, a little bit of time for Royalty to move over to the next safe dial here. The pallet just being broken. Royalty kind of zoned back towards this shack Another side, and there's a lot of dead zone left. over here. Back and forth. Royalty perfectly playing this wall after breaking nine of side. Fourth generator coming out as well. Royalty juicing up right here and saving so much time for his team. They are sitting on that final generator and Roy, nowhere to be found, managed to break line of sight once again. Is turning these four lane oh tiles God. into an absolute empire here for Royalty and now Whistle is even forced to move away. What a show by Royalty! Able to go for over three minutes on that generator. It felt like Wizzle now going to break the gen. We know someone's nearby. I believe it was Dan, an injured survivor as well. So if Wizzle's able to capitalize on this, this could be huge. But oh, no one's around. You can't find anyone. But the only thing that he'll get out of this is that call of Brian applied to the generator. The survivor should probably be your setting. As you are in a last gen scenario, you don't want Wizzle to get any pressure here going into the end game, Especially when, as we know, and the survivors should as well, if they've been calling out the perks, that noed is a possibility here coming into the uh, end game and Wizzle does have it. Everybody, I think, yep, Dan's going for the reset. Royalty now returning back towards the top to ask for a reset. Dan is going to be the one heading towards the generators as Bubbo sits on the shack right next to the killer. Is he going to be found? That's the question. Will we check here? Ooh, the sprint burst comes out. He preemptively goes for it as Wizzle oh. was also still checking that corner. So the next chase will start. It, it's all up to Dan to either reset Royalty and both of them focus on the generators or to Dan to finish that generator by himself. Royalty really can't do anything in this situation. He has to wait for his teammates as Wizzle should be able to pressure him from any distance. However, we've seen Royalty in the chase. Wizzle might not even be able to do that, but ooh, a wonderful shot on to Bubbo. Will force now two survivors to be basically used to stand. The only one who could really do anything in this situation. I think a reset is sorely needed for Eternal here in this situation as Wizzle is just going to use this Call of Brian to regress these generators as much as possible, but finding Dan here is actually huge. The last survivor who is healthy. This can be everyone injured now. Sloppy Butcher oh. applied to all of them. The resets are going to take forever. And now Wizzle also has the opportunity to go after somebody since he knows that everybody is injured. They're, they can't really go into his area without taking a huge risk. So committing right now is definitely the play. Yeah, this is insane, right? Because now the decision making onto Eternal is really, really hard. You need to decide between generator oh what a jew coming out here just in time that is so huge if dan would have been down there there was a hook in the three oh my god and moving a few meters towards the northern side of the suffocation pit nice jew right here is it going to be the generator the thing is that bubba zavre got reset royalty reset as well so eternal is taking a little bit of an extra turn here going for these resets they want to make sure that whistle has no chance to become oppressive here and put too much down onto their shoulders but this is going to be another hook stage in this three gen yes it's towards the mid section you have a little bit of an easier time getting this survivor off the hook and uh, then you can move towards the top side but still the one survivor being uh, caught right here that's Bubazavre at the shack and that's very deep inside of the three gen as well 
Royalty will be busy with potentially resetting Gan, and even though they are opting to go for the gens, Bubazafra is looping over here. Nobody can go for the objectives, and that's going to be value from the Cigar. Just Ooh, a very tree. short stun here, and going straight after this survivor who was getting stuck in the tree here, and that's only a TNL to work with. Is it going to be the shot? No, oh. Wizzle waits a little bit, but then perfect patience leading e to another down so what we can see is that eternal is not able to move towards the top side here not finding the safety they need dan potentially caught out here by whistle as well as forced to rotate towards the bottom side inside of the three gen so whistle basically able to keep the gameplay entirely into the area he wants and as long as he's able to do that and eternal is not breaking out of it there will be more stages following but we do see a generator on 80 percent already so just a few seconds Ooh, away Mr. from the end game. I think that was a missed skill check. Yes, it was. Oh, that's going to set them back by so much right here. Royalty is going to be able to leave early, but that missed skill check is going to cause so much for the team. Wizzle now knows exactly which one they were working on, and even though Bubba is saved, they still need to be reset by Gan, and Wizzle now knows that two injured survivors are within his three gen. This is such a good position for Wizzle to be in. He could get potentially two downs here back to back if he's able to find both and get a quick down on each, but, ooh, Royalty's still going to be pressuring this. A great play from Eternal to try and force Wizzle to face the only non Injured survivor as the other two work on that generator, but with the call of Brian and the Miss Skill Check are both going to have a lot of regression on that one generator that was around 70%. And now with Royalty injured, Wizzle can do whatever he wants. The survivors right now need to have a either rotated or tried to go for a reason. It seems Dan was being caught in the middle of his rotation, so Wizzle now has a target and is again within the three gen. The down will come out fast, and the survivors need to get on this reset even faster if they want to win out this set. Yeah. Yeah, they need to be faster, they need to be more efficient, and they need to find a way that their safety plan really, really works. They are opting to go for these resets, which is a good sign, but they are not finding the right oh, the location gym. with it, and they are staying in the three gen. But look at this one, we haven't seen that one before, and it's knocking around 75% already. So there is work being done here. The survivor left a long time ago, very, very beautiful coordination on the team of eternal one last oh, generator ooh, needed before we go into the end game whistle with the perfect rate rotation and the perfect timing catching the potential rescuer that is waiting out here for dan and we do see scratch marks on the other generator so yes tied three gen but eternal is still putting up a lot of pressure here on to whistle he is taking a look once again wants this kick on this generator and wants to make sure that there's no survivor hiding behind the hill hopping on the generator as soon that that's possible. He's playing a little bit of back and forth with this rescuer over there. Is Dan going to die? That's the important question here because two survivors, both injured, would have a very, very hard time to contest this generator. It's going to be another kick and that's the elimination in the distance onto Dan. Two v one scenario now. One filler pallet here that can be played. Very nice uh, crouch tech there by Bubazavre. Royalty might find the time Ooh, to finish oh, that last gym. generator, but he's working he's really on the close. one at the hill. That's going to be a quick down. Call of Brian did some work. Is Royalty able to at least uh, secure these two additional points? Yes. The answer is yes, he does get it just in time. Just in time. Ten points for Eternal, but it will end in a 4K right here. But good day. This is so huge that Royalty got that done because now the win condition is that trauma needs an escape here in the next trial. Yeah, that's going to be so hard to me as well. Wizzle really didn't want that lash in a pop, and even the call of Brian giving him the information, they just couldn't make it in those last couple of seconds. And now it's confirmed. Bubble and Royalty both on hooks. Not going to lose one point to that bleed out roll. Instead, we're going to have the full 28 to 10 here. But like you said, even though Eternal's score might look low here, you know, we're really expecting them to 4K in the next set as well. So seeing that now Trauma has to get an escape here, it's going to be very, very tough for them to come out and come back with a victory you know i think if you're eternal though though the best thing that you want to hope for right now is a tie hopefully trying to get everybody out yeah. the end game uh, is definitely something that i would look forward to as eternal yeah the tie might be a very good option you have to agree with that you definitely I, I would definitely expect either a no way out or no one escapes death in 
case the 4k strategy doesn't work with the generator then you can pull something in the end game go for some sort of a stack keep them all in the suffocation pit and then make sure you just replay this set ladies and gentlemen what an opener for this grand final 28 trauma 10 for eternal win condition is an out for team trauma we will see if they are able to do that and we are going to show you that straight after a short break Welcome back, everybody. Zaka for Eternal going against Hardwell, Raw, Grenout, and nothing. We see a dangerous Dwight coming in. A surprising pick on a Survivor roster. Usually Dwight isn't played in competitive death by daylight, but uh, if you do feel good with your main character, then to bring it into the trial. Zaka will have the task to kill Trauma before they are moving out of the doors here, so you do force a tie if a 4K on 5 generator is done is uh, happening and uh, if Saka manages to keep it generated then he would even force the win same as before we see a wonderful three gen um, by the craft intervention so it's going to be a nice setup for both <laughs> expecting the add-on there uh going back a little bit but these scratch marks um not from a survivor in the locker or was it actually and just good patience by trauma there that's the question but zaka not able to go into the first uh, chase with anyone here going towards the midsection again next uh, survivor over here but uh, not able to really start the chase just yet it's happening on the shack however and this very valuable resource is dropped but hardball in exchange not taking an injury so we are almost one minute into this trial with no danger for team trauma just yet and this looks by far more confident than the start of team eternal yeah, you know, you're having a lot more of these extended chases. Zaka is going to need to get an injury soon here if he wants to live up to the previous match. And on top of that, we have a semi-fortune on the top side, which Zaka isn't defending here at the start. The survivors can go and try to force that to be broken, but maybe Zaka is trying to play for the late game where the survivors are going to have a lot less pressure once Zaka gets his initial down. They'll only be able to pop one or maybe two generators since he is uh, pressuring this uncorrupted side. However, I believe we heard a generator being worked on next to where Zaka is during this chase, so the survivors aren't scared of that either. Hardwell is going to take the injury here. Finally, Zaka going to be right on their trail. Hardwell was right next to him. The stun uh, did Lincoln by that cigar right there will mean that Hardwell is not going to be able to make much distance, but it's not going to matter as, he, as Zaka misses that next shot as well. He's going to need to try and get this down as fast as possible as the survivors have already popped one generator and another one should be coming soon. The next generator should indeed come soon, especially with how confident they are looking here in this early game. Another Zaka one. not able to take pressure onto them. There's now the down in exchange for two generators already. So what a huge start for Team Trauma here. Efficiency on point. We have to say, and uh, this is now going to be the hook over here, not even in an area that is giving you a lot of potential. The three gen was there on the top side. That's the strong setup he had. You have a few generators down there, but now look at the distance Zaka has between the hook and he these three gens up here. So that's going to be a free save for Team Trauma, and I'm expecting them to communicate very early about Zaka approaching the top side here. So they will be gone. We see the scratch marks, and yes, indeed, they do take the correct side of the hill here making sure that Zaka has no chance for an injury he has to rotate towards the left side now check on the generator up there because he does need to carry Ooh. this uh, three gen for a little bit longer here but so far neither call of Brian or sloppy butcher or eruption are really coming in touch for, uh, for him because trauma just doesn't allow him to That's go insane. for a lot of pressure but Zaka with an insane snipe here this is exactly what you need in a situation like this this is how you pull this back but he has has to rotate to this generator where someone is not hitting the perfect skill checks here that can't be hard will the man that is winning all the coin flips here and that's going to be another sniper attempt by Zaka is it going Ooh, to come through a lot of hesitation and the miss coming out that's huge for team trauma now able to rotate all the way into the mid section yeah, now Zaka really needs to try and get this injury as fast as possible. He's trying to go for a mind game, forcing the survivor to play around the window. He does end up getting the shot just barely on the back of Rinno, and they're not going to be able to make much distance either thanks to that cigar. Once again, Zaka getting the max amount of value out of that add-on. However, is he going to be able to catch up? That's a question. And ooh, 
going for the reload there. Probably the best play, honestly, since it didn't seem like Zaka with the 4.4 movement speed of Destiny was going to get that hit. And now, after the rotation from Grinout, the down will come through and we'll see the eruption pop up. But no value, nobody inca incapacitated by it. So even if someone's on there, the great communication from Trauma there was able to get them off. But now the hook will come through. The question is, where are the survivors? What gens are they working on? And are they going to be able to get some done before Zaka is able to snowball here as now he has two fresh hooks and has the potentiality to go after more people. But as we've been seeing from the survivors, they have some, some great chases. Unless Zaka is able to counteract that, I think Zaka is in a really tough spot. Yeah, this is going to be one of these situations you really do not want to be in when you are the killer. You want to make sure that um, you're not in a position, a position where you have a lot of distance between generators and the hook. He has put it a little bit in a better spot now, but oh, hello, Nancy. Okay, life is there. I was uh, a little bit uh, shocked for a moment, but uh, trauma has everything under control. They will, however, take an injury here and move towards the midsection. Zaka will be happy with that. That's going to be a little bit of a longer reset due to the sloppy butcher. Rotating back towards the unhook here and there's no chance for Granout to leave anytime soon. The survivor that wanted to rotate is now caught out in the midsection so we do potentially see the second stage of Granout coming in just a few seconds away here but they do pull him in time. Unfortunate event uh, for Zaki missing this chain as well so all of these little moments that uh, would be needed to take the pressure, injure trauma and make them busy with resets and uh, the unhooks isn't really happening. So for now, Zaka's number one mission should be to find this survivor Granout straight again to rehook him into the second stage. But it seems like the survivors have doing a good job in hiding, and therefore all Zaka can do is a kick on the generator, which will be definitely not enough to pull set number one for Team Eternal. Yeah, this next chase is all going to be what it's down to, but Sokka not committing on nothing just yet. He goes back, finds the scratch marks of another survivor. The question is, is this survivor injured? I wouldn't expect so, and no, that's going to be Hardwell, the, uh, the healthy ace that is going to take this next chase. Sokka is going to need to end this soon, and by breaking that breakable wall, Hardwell is going to be able to get some distance, but you're going to have to do it in the long run, as Hardwell will get a lot of runs around this, but another Jin, only one more remaining, and no three Jin to speak of either. This is not looking for good for Sokka. He's going to need to try and snowball here, if he wants to get some downs and missing Hardwell is not how you start that off. Zaka needs to consolidate his pressure as of now. He finds an injured survivor. That's nothing. This could potentially be the down that Zaka needs, but another miss. Nothing was able to dodge at the oh. last second. Grinow also getting reset in the distance. That means one less survivor that you can down very, very quickly. So that means nothing taking this comp corner. But oh, the incapacitated status effect from eruption will be applied to. I believe that was Hardwell right next to where Zaka was, meaning that this gin isn't going to get completed just yet. Just yet, yeah, a few more seconds for Zaka here, but it's dangerous, right? Three stages. On the other hand, we had three stages in the previous trial as well, and everything pointed towards Eternal, taking a lot of stages out of the door. The difference is that we had three generators somewhat close together. Now look at this horrible three gen for Zaka here. And Against our prediction, we do not see an endgame perk. No, no one escapes death. No, no way out. I have to say I'm really, really surprised about that because uh, I do think no one escapes death would have been a very, very good choice here, especially in a situation like that. You would have had the chance to put pressure last second onto Trauma, go for a slug in the end game across the suffocation pit here. Now you will be in a difficult spot. Oh, adrenaline! This aggressive combination doesn't work out. It's going to be an adrenaline onto Hardwell as well here. End game with three stages. Trauma At least absolutely time. smashing their pick here. And I think today it's really clear why this was their free pick. Yeah, they were really confident going against the Deathslinger and playing as able to get a 4k. We might even see the four men out as we see Grin out here taking a body block. Zaka is going to have to play out of his mind and land this next shot if he wants to prevent the four out as nothing. Grin out have a lot of cover right here. Zaka is going to have to go for a very ambitious shot and he does get one onto nothing. The question is, will the blind be enough to prevent Zaka from getting this next hit? No, he's able to listen. He has the ears and nothing will go down on the floor. Now, it, this is the question. Are they going to just take the three out or go? in for the save on their friend. No, nothing is going to be left in the dust, and after this match, there will be nothing left of him. 
now going to be the question how high the score actually is. We need to take a look onto that. We will receive it from our wonderful scorekeepers. It's definitely a score that is not only going to decide step number one, it's going to be a score that really hits deep into the heart. And we have a score of a 45 to 23. Good day, look at that. That is not a typical score in a grand final where the teams are on edge to each other and where they are playing on the same level. This was Trauma playing their grand final and Eternal being a guest in it. Yes, that's definitely true. And we'll see if, if uh, Eternal is able to earn their spot at the table after a short break. Welcome back, everyone. Bubba Zavre, who played so insanely well yesterday against Team Sequence, is now getting his Billy ready again. We either see, and this is the great thing about him, we either see a low pro chain Billy, we see um, the 4.4 Billy, we might see the sky rocket jumping flying Billy from the past. I'm sure Bubba Zavre could even that pull out, even though we have five game stages in the future. <laughs> Hartwell, Raw, Granite, and nothing. The non-changed survivor roster for Team Trauma. A little bit of a spoiler here, it will be be the same roster for trauma all day so these four have practiced these four have well prepared let's see how it's played out on the gas heaven here against the hillbilly high mobility killer who however struggles and chases with a lot of resources and very very well survivor team coordination Bubazavre is going in as a 4.4 andy once again will try Ooh, to find the first survivor that perfectly works quick get charge time and oh Almost that was that. just a few inches around the corner here imagine that would have been the first one so Bubazavre based Basically, just coming into this match as he finished yesterday once. Very aggressive, very confident, and uh, I could imagine it down here very soon because this isn't the safest tile if Nancy isn't hey, making it all the way towards the shack here. Yeah, the bamboos is definitely going to play in favor of Bubbo as well. Only has this tile now up. However, no low pro, so he can't really play around it. He needs to try and... Oh, oh I thought this was the pallet one. No, it's the double windows. This is even worse for nothing than the, yeah. the bamboos. was definitely going to be very, very hard for him to play around. And yep, the wow. down's going to come through because of that. That bamboozle has just been so strong. Such a good pick on the hillbilly. We've seen so much use out of it. And oh, oh, as well, Bubbo is going to be able to get a basement hook here. The only question is whether or not the survivors... Are are gonna be able to complete a lot of gins in the meantime. Bubbo should be able to camp this out and just get a free kill here at the start. So, comes down to the survivor efficiency as we see from that first gin as well popping. This should mean that the survivors aren't too far behind as well. Now going to be Blizzard, just confident cross map run. Trying to catch the next survivor, get as many busy as possible. One needs to go for the unhook, one needs to go for the chase with Bubba Zavre, but then we have seen it yesterday. Bubble trying to always come back in a good timing, always making sure that a potential rescuer is taking some distance with no value and that time is being wasted. And he's doing it once again, trying to find a nice mix between generator defense and uh, guarding the basement there. And it does seem to work out. We might see the second stage on to nothing here. So uh, let's see how this is played out there's our comp dwight and there's the second generator we might see a third one anytime soon but uh, trauma seems to kind of be willed to sacrifice nothing second stage in the basement there and for now i think that is a very understandable and very logic trade-off the issue is that this dwight over here uh needs to have a phenomenal chase now in the mid game right now oh i was talking all that good time. day ah! <laughs> <I'm> okay <here. laughs> oh yeah hardwell is gonna be on the floor now oh i was just talking about how bubble had that 4.4 and because of that he was able to guarantee that hardwell would take the down there oh that bump was just so huge for team trauma right there uh 
able to get the save onto nothing. However, Bubba with that 4.4 add-on, able to get that charge lead, and because of that, was able to get the down onto Harbo. So a very nice trade-off. Even though Bubble made a mistake, he was able to turn it into something well for his team. Nothing now going to be able to take the chase in the middle. And as I was saying before, I was um, unmuted. Uh, there's going to be a lot of filler pots here <laughs> in the middle, but there is a potentiality for Bubble to try and go land a curve on any one of these objects. So the real question is if Bubble is able to do that, but nothing being really, really good right here, able to chase around the one area where Bubble really can't get a curve around. This junk tiles have very weird collision, meaning that he has to go for the M1, and after the Bloodlust, he's able to get it. But in the meantime, the survivors were able to finish yet another gin. And this is now going to be a tricky run, right? Because um, it is going to be so much pressure onto the survivor team once you are in the three v one scenario. It's difficult today. I would have picked up earlier no, when uh, you were muted, but the issue is with my internet, I need to give you like 20 <laughs> seconds of flexibility because I never know if it's me. But we are both back, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and we do carry you through this uh, trial. This is going to be a nice kick onto the generator, so Bubble good in chainsawing, good in chasing, and good in generated defense. Call of Brian doing so much work for him here, and I really like that pick with the no one escapes death as well because it shows us that Bubble is aware, yes, I have confidence I can finish these uh, chases relatively quickly, but I am playing against Trauma. I am aware I'm in a grand final, and if something is not going according to the plan, I have this in my back pocket. And to be fair, a 4K against Trauma would also be almost unrealistic. So a very nice perk combination coming out there, a nice mix between endgame safety and aggressive gameplay with the bamboozle there in the mid game. Really, really like it. It's now going to come in clutch here. Dwight will need to play this uh, jungle gym with uh, no window and he's not using the pallet straight away. Uh, Jonah wants to take another turn here. Now he's dropping it, however, early enough to not be in any danger here and he makes this uh, corner there as well. Bamboozle reapplied, double vault by uh, Bubba Zavre now, trying to throw off the survivor, but it doesn't work so far. Dwight oh, is absolutely cranking here in this chase. Uh, does he get the curve? The no, most he does possible and he does dodge the chainsaw as well so absolutely on point here with this chase and this very very likely looks like generator number five being done any second here yeah, RxW has done an insane job on this chase. However, Bubbo has cornered him into only being able to use this window. The question is, is he going to go for it? He does, but Bubbo, even with the charge speed, isn't going to be able to connect the chainsaw. And that's going to be the last gen popping as well, meaning Bubbo is going to have to play for as many points as possible here in the game. I believe RxW is a fresh recover, so this would be a great down to get. And with that no head speed and uh, being able to just go for the M1 right here, it's going to be able to come through. RxW now going down, not able to avoid the hit by going to the locker just yet. But the question is, are the survivors working on the uh, know it or are they just gonna leave it seems like they're just gonna leave Grinnow is a fresh look so that's gonna be three points out the door and Hardwell only being on his first look that's gonna be another two uh, adding up for five more points for trauma however RxW being a fresh look is gonna give seven for eternal here yeah, that's a very nice end game play here by a bubble, a 10 point swing, 7 for the kill, 3 2 2, and then 3 points denied for a fresh hook. Walking out of the door here, so a very, very nice value from No One Escapes Death here. Not all aggressive, taking a little bit of uh, safety there towards the end. It is going to be uh, the um, second. 17-15, uh, I believe, in the score there. We will confirm in a second. And uh, we will see you with the upcoming trial in a couple of minutes. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the next uh, trial here. It's Trauma now coming out on the killer and uh, we have this one up because we want to update you on the score you will see that trauma has dropped down to 13 there was a double lucky break due to a technical difficulty on our back end we were not noticing that just in time but eternal was given the chance to replay the match and take a penalty, but then the score of the second try would count, or just taking the minus two for the balance offense. Eternal decided to go with the minus two and keep it up. So you will now see Hartwell on the killer, but the score dropped from 15 to 13. So it is in fact now an eight stage game by Bubas Davre. Seven stages will be enough for Eternal to take 
the win. Let's uh, go and uh, we are into this. Uh, let's take a uh, look onto this first chase at the Shack. It needs to be a long run, especially considering how quick Kugusaku was. Uh, this would be a great chance to put pressure down early on. Nightlight is taking the injury, but he does take some distance. He cannot drop that pallet with the low pro chains, but he's not going to do that. Nice W holding action here by a Nightlight. That's exactly the right decision making. Distance and time, and uh, now he can even rotate one time around the entire main building. His so oh, Nightlight putting up a good game. chase and uh, making sure that uh, this first chase the isn't coming over. to an end anytime soon here. Yeah, that was a great mind game from Nightlight. Cheeky. Immediately vaulting over as Hardwell is trying to go around the corner, oh. trying to predict him. Nightlight now gets the stun as well. That's going to be able to make him go towards this other pallet, which we've seen has a lot of use against the hillbilly. And ooh, taking the stun once again. Nightlight, however, is going to have to be wary of this low throw. If Hardwell just goes for it, he's going to be in a sticky situation. He might be able to last for a couple more seconds. But ooh, Hardwell hits the uh, hits the wall. I don't even think if he he broke that that uh, pallet there, unless. That was just a visual bug. I didn't see the pallet actually broken, but ooh, a generator pops, and that Rancor is going to let us know exactly where all the survivors are currently on the map. Hardwell, however, still needs to work for this down. Eternal not making it easy for the killer of trauma here. Yeah, not making it easy at all, and this is exactly what you need, right? Trauma got the grand final. How they planned this set number one going for them. Now it's Eternal's pick. They were saying, Bubba, you played so well on the Billy yesterday. You have to come in again. That's our plan, and look at this. Two gents and on a single hook stage award. It's so far, and that's going to be Nightlight reaching this uh, pallet without a problem. So once again, very, very nice work here. Nightlight popping off here in this chase, making sure that his team has so much time and he will even reach this window. Bamboozle is coming out, making sure that Nightlight cannot use it once again, but it doesn't seem like Nightlight cares. He will reach this pallet as Ooh, well, and that's going to be back and forth. My game, patience from Nightlight. Look at oh this. My God. Such a strong play, <laughs> and now eventually it's too. coming to an end. But even though this back and forth was successful, there was still 10 <sighs> seconds of hesitation back and forth in the mind game. So very, very strong here. And uh, therefore, it's going to be a well-earned first hook, but potentially one that is coming in a little bit too late here. Oh yeah, I definitely do agree there. Nightlight taking that hook. Hardwell is going to have to try and work on these generators. However, it's going to be very, very hard for him to come back at this stage if the survivors are working on them efficiently. And with two survivors splitting up right next to each other, both of them almost completed, that's definitely going to be a good interruption for Hardwell, but also kind of a scary thing to see with so much pressure on these generators. You have to hope that someone doesn't get Nightlight off the hook and starts on another one as well, because that would be the final three generators close to popping. Dan, however, doing a great Great job at this tile. I think Hardwell might have even lost his scratch marks at this point. Yeah, he ran deeper towards the shack, and Hardwell didn't notice his nightlight gets saved across the map. We're now going to hope for a, a snipe of a lifetime, but no, Hardwell's not going to be able to get it. That means Dan can once again make some more distance playing around this filler tile as well. Hardwell's going to have a hard time and actually trying to get a hit here. However, the low pro might help out here. Oh, but he puts the chainsaw down just at the wrong time. That means Dan can now make it back to the TNL wall, but you have to keep in mind this is the only resource that he really has to play out right now so it's gonna be difficult for Hardwell to try or it's gonna be difficult for Dan to try and get away from Hardwell in this situation but it seems like he's doing his best hiding his scratch marks as best as possible and making sure that the killer really doesn't know his exact location at all times but ooh, another generator and that's gonna be Rancor once again showing us locations but we still don't have much generator pressure and if uh, you guys looked at the bottom left corner, there are three stages awarded out of nowhere. And we got the information from the back end staff team that Zaka seems to have a crash on his game. That will be something we need to look into after that game. For now, we are playing it out. If it was responsibility of behavior, it will be a no for restart if it's somewhat on Zaka's end internet or PC or whatever, then he would count as eliminated. That could be something here, but 
maybe uh, Eternal even pulling it without needing a restart because they are looking really strong. But also weird that Zaka is still not disconnected officially from the scoreboard there on the bottom left. But he is gone. We have the confirmation of that from Eternal's VC here. So a very weird game. And uh, there is no grand final if there wouldn't be any decision like that and something <laughs> going wrong on the side of the game. So uh, it's just going, getting more and more exciting here. So no Zaka anymore in the trial. It's going to be Dan, Nightlight and Bubazato on their own here. They are doing a good job, but they are already facing five stages here. So let's have a look how this Ooh, is. Ooh, gets done. is taking the reset. Last generator completed. Seven stages, we said, would be fine. That means this survivor, I believe, needs to escape. However, otherwise... Uh, the uh, score would be in favor of Trauma, and we do have a no one escapes death oh, no, it's in gone, the trial. No. So this is going. Oh, never mind. Cast this curse. I basically jinxed it, and uh, this looks good. And they could actually pull this even with a DC. That would be insane to see Eternal coming back from that first match. Now with a DC, it's still taking the W. That would be so, so huge to see. Bubble is going to try and live up to this, using this filler power over. He's going to need somebody to try and take a body block or potentially just move out the way of this chainsaw, just re reverting Hardwell from actually trying to take this down. I think if Dan, or rather Nightlight, takes the down, the person who was hooked previously, this could mean that the survivors do still win here, but it's going to be it's tough to see. Either way, I would say that you need to try and go in for the save, but with Basement right next to us and Hardwell taking us so far away from the door, it's going to be a very difficult decision to make for the survivors, and I don't think that they're going to go for it just yet. Now going to be the tricky one here. Nightlight on the hook. Will they go back in this? Uh, it would be two more stages. Let's uh, calculate real quick. It might actually be enough here. Three stages from Zaka, three from Nightlight. Seven stages. That should be a win regardless of the DC. That would be... Yeah, 32-30 even though it is going to be the DC from Zaka and Eternal basically played a three. We won. They still managed to do it now what do we see in this grand final so far today we had an absolute dominant performance from team trauma in set number one and now we have absolute dominance from team eternal with a three we won win like, this is not what we expected <laughs> at all we said at the beginning that uh we expect a game that is just coming down to a few stages and now we are looking onto two sets that were dominated by the teams yeah, this is definitely what we expected in the finals. We said it would be back and forth. We said that both sides would show their dominance. And because of that, I think both of them are trying to live up to the challenge. Eternal taking a 3v1 and Trauma taking that first set so handily. This has been one of the most exciting matches that I've had to see thus far. And I think that the grand finals are only getting started. But we'll see what the rest entails after a short break. All right, everybody, let's see if the Blight set is going to be just a few stages or if there's dominance from one team again. You will be shocked that Blight is on the cold tower, but Granout and then Nightlight will be the killers here. It's interesting to see that Nightlight is not going to be on the roster for Eternal in this match, even though he is playing the Blight himself. Maybe they want to give him a little bit of preparation and a little bit of break before going into that killer performance in set number three. But yes, indeed, we are on the cold tower. We wanted to force a very very heavy game for the survivors you are constantly under pressure you have no chance to have any free moment and you need to be so so Dan's on already point injured. with every single decision making already an injury here that shows exactly what the Cold Tower Blight is bringing into the game. But how unfortunate is this for Granout? The trees are not working how Granout wants them to work. That's going to be no collision there. And that's a little bit of time win for Dan. Yeah, that's definitely not going to be what you want after the start. But Dan still being injured is still huge. But oh, the balance landed on another miss from Grinnell means that this chase will go on just a little bit longer. If Dan is playing safely here, which it seems like he is, he should be able to try and extend this chase to, to the length of what a normal one would be against a different killer. But ooh, a mind game from Grinnell will mean that the down still will come through. And still, after that start, Dan did the best that he could and made this chase relatively long for the start of the game. 
game. So very well played from him. The survivors should have some time to start on those generators because of that. But Grinnell is in a position of power right now, knowing that he can interrupt whatever gen that he wants and snowball even further. But the survivors aren't going to let that go with already one generator popping. Grinnell will find Bubbo, but it's a second too late. And uh, this is going to be now the back and forth right here. So this is uh, going to be the very, very needed chase. Let's see how quick that is. And uh, it is going to be now Granat rushing back towards that hook here. But that's going to be a beautiful stun right out of this. So uh, let's. Uh, this is going to be the rotation back towards this one. And. Uh, this is going to be now this stun here. So uh, I feel like this game is on edge once again, good day. And this is uh, going to be a very, very difficult one because if this elimination, for example, would come through, there could be a huge win for uh, our killer here. But on the other hand, if Eternal manages to move away, that would be huge for them. Yeah, this would be something very, very difficult for them. But oh my god, Bruno, with all of the injures, this is such a good position for him to be in. Royalty now going down, that's going to be another injury. Even though two generators popped, it's still going to be a question of whether or not Grino is going to be able to capitalize on this pressure. We've seen Zaka already been reset at this point. Royalty is going to take the hook. But the question is, again, if Grino is going to be actually able to capitalize on this. The survivors have done a great job working on the generators. Dan also going to be reset. I expect Bubbo to be on the way. But but, ooh, the reset gets interrupted. Grinout finds Dan, but he's not going to go for Bubble just yet. He's going to return back to the hook. He's scared that Zaka is going to be going over there. Also going to kick this gin on the way over to ensure the survivors can't uh, get that much progress on it just yet. Now, the rotation back towards this one here. We see one survivor on the generator here. And uh, we do have a little bit of dancing there on the... Uh, royalty if i'm not mistaken there was a deliverance right there right so royalty yeah. has the cheeky play prepared there it is broken status effect telling us what's uh, going on it is a, a hit onto bubba zavla and now going to rotate over towards this one but not able to find the uh, down straight away but a little bit of patience is making sure that hook stage number three is now coming in that royalty had deliverance will cut a lot of pressure from the survivor team they didn't need to take time to uh, go for an unhook right there and so far i have to say for a difficult game on call tower two generators in exchange for three hook stages looks like a really good balance so far so very, very insanely done here by Team Eternal. If they can keep it up, that could be a good result for them. Usually, we have to say it often comes down to the generators as the win condition. Yeah, but you have to keep in mind with Grinnell having two of these survivors injured and one on the hook. If he's able to find Zaka or better yet, one of those injured survivors, he can force this game to a standstill. But it all comes down to whether or not the survivors really let their location be known. And with that blood leading a trail over towards Royalty, that is going to be the case. Zaka, the only one who can go in for the save right now. But Grinnell, if he's able to get this down before Zaka can even head over there, ooh, it could be bad as he gets the hit right through the pallet onto Royalty. Now can head out back immediately over to Bubbo, sees Zaka going for the save. He doesn't have the charges up just yet, though. So the save is going to come through. However, the injury onto Zaka is going to come true as well. But you have to keep in mind, now everyone's injured. We're back in that situation that Granat was at the start of the game. Everyone injured. Are you able to capitalize on it? That's the question. Royalty already going to be put on the hook. Zaka and Bubbo, you know the whereabouts of them generally. And now the real question is, is Dan going to be able to finish a generator before Granat really takes advantage of this? Yeah, the advantage is the huge part, right? He could turn this into a very dangerous spot for Team Eternal. We haven't seen a third generator just yet. Sometimes you do feel like all oh, the pressure is there. And the killer is able to cut it all down. And now they are running after the pressure here. Three injured survivors as well. It will be once again a difficult decision for them if they want to keep up the pressure on these objectives or if they pull back all together and go for a reset. So far, we do not see them so potentially they are Ooh, staying at the generators here we do have third generator done in the distance six points for team eternal so far another in one in this uh, trial another one eternal now showing off here and uh, there's going to be royalty but royalty had a pallet around to play with it so this is going to be call of brian onto this generator royalty able to leave the area so no direct pressure onto this survivor now the chance for a reset once again you have these two generators confirmed you could pull back here and royalty not even 
looking like they are in a lot of danger here because the pallet in this jungle gym is around as well. But there's Dan being found and down, so this is going to be the fifth hook stage. But still, four generators for five hook stages is insanely well played on the call tower. Yeah, you definitely usually expect a blight to 4k on this map, but when you're talking about this caliber of survivors, it really comes down to the survivor play and not just the killer play. The survivors have been so good at spreading out and forcing the resets and making sure that the killer can't find them at specific moments and only finding them when they want. You know, we saw Royalty being fed their chat earlier while I believe Bubba was on the hook, but that's exactly what they wanted. They wanted the bait out so that Zaka could go in for the save on him, and that's exactly what we're seeing across the entire game as Zaka now being found, but he's healthy. The other survivors are going to be able to go in for the save now. The second win on Dan as well. And on top of that, they're going to be able to work on the last generator as Zaka seems to be wanting to go die in the corner, but he's going to waste a little bit of Renault's rushes before that. And oh, the fatigue comes through too at, uh, as well. So this means that Grinout still has to work for this down. Zaka is still going to have to play it around this tile. And ooh, Grinout is just too much choosing to take his losses and try to interrupt the last gen before it actually goes and pops. Yeah, this is going to be end game any second here. Yeah, I'm confident about it as well. It would be a trauma for Granau to go into the end game with five stages here, not what you are looking out for. So uh, hopefully he is able to find another survivor really quickly here and force another down. The generators that are left are not looking too bad here. It's still kind of a three gen you can make work, especially with a high mobility killer we have on Granau out's hands here so mm, let's see if he's able to do that now we do see actually uh, the resets on the side of eternal so they do decide before we are trying to push through this generator setup we want to have everyone healthy zaka is receiving the health state as well they are caught out however but not injured straight everyone again. reset interesting point to go for the full reset here at the top side where nobody's expecting them really worked kind of out and uh, eternal yeah back to everyone healthy so they do have a lot of chases now just on giving their him hands a here and uh, yeah where's zaka zaka the ninja there we see the med kid unfortunate but cutting down 20 seconds here by this ninja game was uh, still a good success for Team Eternal. Third bump already. This survivor here left. That's going to be, however, an injury onto Bubazavra, who left the generator not early enough. It's going to be Brian on the telephone again. The call is coming through here, and that's going to be uh, the next uh, chase. But he is forced to go back towards the top side. We can see the pressure that's on Granard's shoulders here. So every mistake could immediately end in the end game here. Yeah, this is definitely going to be very, very difficult for Grinnell to try and take a comeback. However, as with this last generator playing, as if Eternal keeps up the pace that they're going for, they're just going to slowly gain more and more progress on the generators, and Grinnell isn't going to be able to keep up with it, even with the Call of Brian. We see now the loud noise notification, Call of Brian. Let us know that a survivor is working on this generator, and that's going to be the last generator as well. We see Bubbo takes the body block with Adrenaline Zaka, not going down just yet. Grinnell is going to have to commit to a chase once again, but... Bubbo is going to be right there behind. Bruno could potentially use his power to gain an advantage here in this situation, but no, just going to go for the M1. And now another body block from Dan, who already has some stages, is going to come through the trading of stages in that scenario. The door is almost open, but it's not quite there. But ooh, it's going to be open just in time. Bruno isn't going to be able to get another survivor. That's going to be the three man out. And only one more stage, two more points for Bruno that he's going to earn here. That's another dominant performance. Once again, this is not what we expected, not what we predicted. N yeah. Like, I feel like we could have cancelled the entire campfire chat <laughs> with talking about trauma and eternal and what we can expect. I mean, this is just the last stage, right? This is a six stage game coming out here in this one. This is so insanely done. It's a lead for the survivor team on the blight set. Yeah. When do you have that? It's a 28 for the killer max. 22 for the survivors and whenever the survivor team is taking the lead that is already huge but especially on the blight this is a historical moment yeah this is definitely going to be a very big disadvantage for trauma going into the next set but if we know their survivor team we know that they can be strong and they definitely have the chance to try and make it in this next round but the question is is that going to happen and we'll see the answer after a short break 
All right, everyone, it's Nightlight against Hartwell, Raw, Granout, and nothing. 16 points on Eternal. That's not an issue on our scoreboard. That's, in fact, the score from the previous trial. Yes, you're looking correctly. Elite for Survivor Team after... Uh, S-tier killer being played. Insane, especially on the call tower. Six stages out of the door for Team Eternal. That means seven stages by Nightlight would be the win for Team Ooh, Eternal. Oh, 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 third set. And uh, once again, we have an instant injury. So both games start exactly the same here. Nightlight uh, must feel really confident going in. And uh, it is going to be now the pallet drop right here. So it is going to be the... Uh, uh, next uh, rush going over towards this uh, pallet. This killer pallet now being dropped, and that's the rotation from Granat towards the south side, uh, back towards the mid section. And uh, he might play this hill here, so we might have a balanced landing enjoyer, but uh, he's not trying to reach back towards the shack, instead, playing this filler pallet here really well. So even though the injury came in quickly, it's a long chase. Yeah, definitely is going to be a very, very good start, just like the one that we had from Dan. Even though he found him at the start, we had a pretty decent chase. But now, Grinnell going down an area where we saw another survivor, I believe, right next to him. That's going to mean Nightlight is going to be able to find the trails of another survivor nearby as well, meaning that the, the game could snowball as well as there being a Jin being worked on in this area too, even. That means that Nightlight can camp in such a well-contested area that he, the survivors really can't get many Jins done. We might see one popping, but the two others that were being worked on by two other individual survivors aren't going to be uh, getting done anytime soon. And now Nightlight finds another one right on top of that, ran into the, the shack, but now is going to try and run away. I would believe another survivor should be coming into the save right now, but Nightlight goes back and finds nobody as well. So only that one gen that I was talking about earlier will pop and the pop goes Weasel Call a Brian combo. We're going to be seeing L on Nightlight instead of that brutal strength we saw previously. Going back towards Ooh, the shack down. over here. Injury coming out. So this is uh, going to be the uh, next chase down here. Let's see how this is going to be played <laughs> out. What a nice back and forth. But unfortunately, it ends in uh, this uh, quick down here for this uh, survivor. So it is the next hook stage coming in for Nightlight. He is able to uh, make sure that uh, Trauma does not receive time to go for resets or go for this set generators so this is going to be 60 seconds away from uh, the elimination and uh, it is going to be rotation from nightlights but staying on the bottom side a little bit so i mean understandable right with six stages and uh, potentially having a kill very soon this seems to be a confident option here and a Ooh. nice uh, combination of these um, rushes into an entry the safe is coming through but now we will see tunnel and nightlight going for that first elimination here and he's looking really targeting. strong especially with the fact that we have four generators oh, that one's through. Wow. nothing wasn't able to body block there that was so so close to nothing being able to extend the chase just a little longer but Grinnell will go down nonetheless nightlight has to force him away from the pallet though because the pallet save can still come through so the injury on nothing will come out however the question is is rxw close is hardwell close are they hidden and will they get this pallet save i don't hear any footsteps so no that is just going to be the death onto Grino at four gins for me when we only saw one death earlier after the, all the generators had been completed. So a great start for Nightlight here, almost already setting the tone for the rest of these sets. Setting the tone for these sets. Yeah, this is the difficult thing, right? This third set should fall towards trauma. We have to say if we are going towards um, the, what the team's planned, right? This is a trauma's pick once again, so they should take the set point here. That Nightlight is performing, uh, performing so well right here is showing that trauma's plan in set number three is kind of being turned around, and they need to have that latest in set number four back to confidence. But let's see how Nightlight is playing this out. He's in a good position for Generate is still there, but a nice stun here. Trauma, however, they need to go for resets. They need to have long chases. Second generator coming out here so there is a huge potential for them still this is the injury on to raw here but if raw manages to stay alive for way longer and potentially it runs for two generators then it could still be a very very close result